my veil. Come, throw it over your face. We'll once more hear Duke Garcino's embassy. The Honorable Lady of the House, which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty, I pray you, tell me if this be the Lady of the House, for I have never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to coin it. Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? <laughs> no, my profound heart, and yet by the very things of malice I swear, that I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not guess it myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do observe yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is my very commission. I will on my speech in your praise, and then show you my heart of the message. Come to what is important, Amen. I forgot you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis practical. It is the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wander at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of moon with me to make one so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good Swabba, I am here to haul a little longer. Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind, I am a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver. When the courtesy of it is so fearful, speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as fun of peace as matter. Yet you begin rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity, and to, other, to any others, profanation. Give us the place alone, and we will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method, in the first of his heart. Oh, I've read it. It is here, sir. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text, but we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is not well done. Accidentally done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir. Twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly bent whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you leave these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give you out divers schedules of my beauty. It shall be in inveterated in every particle and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two lips, indifferent red. Item, two gray eyes with lids to them. Item, one neck one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are, you are too proud. But if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love that could be recompensed, though you were crowned the non-peril of beauty. How does he love me? 
with adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him, yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in the mention and the shape of nature, a gracious person, but yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love and sing them out, out loud even in the dead of night. And make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not the rest between the elements of the air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send me no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again. To tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I have no feed, post lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love. And let your fervor, like my master's be, placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman? I'll be sworn thou art. Th thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit. Do give thee five told blazon, not too fast. Soft, soft. Unless the master were the man, how now I, even so quickly, may one catch the plague? Methinks I feel this youth's perfections, with an invisible and subtle stealth. To creep in at mine eyes, well, let it be. What, oh, Malvolio?